Today's a bit of a story time. Not so much my review, but a little bit of a story of how a possible opportunity may have presented itself with a big YouTube brand and luxury watch dealer in the space. So let's roll my motherfucking music so we can talk about how Cubano and Luxury Bazaar slash Roman Sharf almost combine. I'm kind of a big deal. My beautiful peoples, you know who it is, it's your boy. See to you to the B to the A. Luxury Bazaar and Roman Sharp. If you don't follow the channel, they are a big watch content creation team as well as a even bigger watch sales team with over a hundred million dollars in sales. Great reputation across the board and they were holding what they like to call the gray market challenge. Now what's the gray market challenge? The gray market challenge was pretty much somebody submits an audition tape to potentially win an opportunity to be a salesman on their team. So anybody who was chosen based on their video, they went on to the next round to a full interview and possibly the opportunity to win a job at Luxury Bazaar. So why would anybody want a job at Luxury Bazaar? Well, their reputation is stellar across the watch community. They do make money, multi-million dollar company. Great exposure for anyone as they do content creation. I believe it's once every week that they drop a video almost or twice a month, something along those lines. So very involved in content creation. And if you watch their videos, Roman really has this, this keen for education and sales ethics, pushing you to your ultimate goal. And that's something that I found very interesting. Now me having my hands in a bunch of different pots, mainly being a content creator as this is my business, I decided, you know what? Let me throw my hat in the ringer and see if this is an opportunity. I love the content. I love watches. I'm not a watch expert, but I can sell and I can market and I am very charismatic and I'm able to do this type of flow, especially when it comes to YouTube content, which is something that they heavily focus on, obviously, as well as sales. I did a video submission and I got chosen. Now they were only going to select three contestants to participate. So what ended up happening is they reached out to the kid, they liked my video, they liked my content on YouTube, and decided to throw a curveball in the mix and offer me an opportunity to interview with Luxury Bazaar. I was super excited and shocked as well. I was like, really? Okay, cool. So I went through an interview process. You guys, if you watch Luxury Bazaar, it was that whole interview process, but unfortunately I couldn't go in person because I had COVID and I let them know, I was like, listen, I would love the opportunity, but I'm not trying to get everybody in the office sick. So if we can do it on Zoom, cool. If we can't, I totally understand and respect it. They graciously accommodated a Zoom call. So I had a Zoom call and was interviewed by four people, like on a round table type situation and all that was recorded. I anticipated I did well on the interview because towards the end, I got a call from Roman directly indicating that, yo, this is what's happening, blah, blah, blah. And he threw a curveball. He's like, you're in the gray market challenge. And I was like, damn, that shit is dope. I was hype. I mean, it was super exciting. I mean, this could potentially be an opportunity of a lifetime to dip my toe in, bring another level of exposure to my brand, improve on my sales techniques, learn more about watches, and with my large followings on multiple platforms, be able to use that to my advantage in the luxury watch space. Now here's where it gets tricky. Luxury Bazaar is in Southampton, Pennsylvania, which is two and a half hours away from me, one way. And in public trance, over three and a half hours. Now that's a commitment and a half. But my thought process behind it was, you know how often I'm in downtown New York City traffic, well over an hour to go from this corner to that corner. Like I should be able to easily make that transition over to Southampton PA for, for a possible opportunity. That seems good. All points to yes. Let's see. So the time had come to actually go and start recording for the gray market challenge. So drove out to Southampton PA and what a drive fam. It was a drive a little bit over two and a half hours. It felt like for fucking ever. If you guys follow me on Patreon, you have seen my vlog story of me recording myself driving up there and I might be putting it on rumble.com, which is I'm going to be putting content on rumble.com as well. So I get to the luxury bazaar headquarters. I gave them a heads up. They're going to start like shooting right from jump. I get inside the building and automatically I'm greeted by this lovely lady who introduced herself. It seems that she was like the hostess or the front desk assistant or something along those lines. And she greeted me with a hug, which was the sweetest freaking thing. I mean, if you're going to go into a business and you get greeted so lovely by this warm, 
mom-like figure to give you a hug, I was like, wow, man, this is like golden. So I walk in and I see the other contestants, and at that time, it was Josh and David. Awesome dudes, they're still in the Great Market Challenge. I mean, I wish them the absolute best. And the other person, which was Peter, wasn't there yet, because I think he was just transitioning from his former employment to Luxury Bazaar. I met the dudes, we chopped it up, I bought them all breakfast. I bought the, the entire Luxury Bazaar team breakfast. I still, to this day, don't think they knew I bought them breakfast, but you're welcome. And I was just looking around and like, damn, this is a big ass space. I was just thinking about the content creation and the whole shit, but I couldn't get over that commute. How long it took me to get there, how early I left, and how the commute coming back would be. And at that moment, I was just having thoughts in my head like, hmm. How can I make this work? Roman comes down, introduces himself, super welcoming, exactly what you see on camera. The work environment at Luxury Bazaar is by far one of the coolest work environments I've ever seen, and I've worked in all facets of business and hospitality. Everybody's chill, dressed however they wanna dress, living their life, they got a ping pong, they got like a game room, they got a content room, they have a huge vault with millions upon millions upon millions of dollars of jewelry and watches. They got a fucking F1 car in like the bullpit where the salespeople sit. And I'm like, damn. And in the hour or two that I'm there, I'm like, the cameras are rolling, everybody's on you, boom, 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 entire content team. This is a well-oiled machine. And I'd never experienced a work environment like that or just an environment period like that, that everybody was chill, receptive. And I'm a great first impressions judge of character. An incredible first impression. I was like, wow, man, this is it. This is the spot to be at. This is amazing. Roman came in, gave like a boiler room speech, and he's like, yo, you know, I know you got the social media part, bam, 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 pinpointing all this shit. I'm hyped. I got my desk set up, I got, they got my, my phone set up, all this shit. Yo, tap in with this guy, tap in with this guy, he can screw, ask any questions, da, 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 and you can literally go up to anybody. You go to Alex, boom, yo, there, this and that. You go to Marco, yo, boom, boom, boom. Everybody. Open door policy, nobody was acting funny, sketchy, like kind of weird, nothing. It was amazing. And they were giving you opportunity to start making money like right from rip. And let me tell you, there is money to be made there. I was beyond hype. In my brain, I was already like doo, 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 doo. So me as a content creator and a brand, I was like, I'm gonna be like, yo, is this gonna interfere with my channel? Is it gonna be a conflict? Can I still do my brands? Can I still do my merch? All this, they're like, you can do whatever you wanna do. Whatever you wanna do, do it. Keep doing your shit. I'm like, so I'ma come into this challenge and fucking kill the game. One thing I couldn't kick was a commute. Another thing I couldn't kick was, how was I gonna continue to make content consistently and bring new refreshing ideas? I could use some of their stuff to make my own content, but I was seeing how the nature of that business worked and I don't know how I would be able to squeeze it in. You gotta do numbers, you gotta do sales. You, you're working for somebody again. And I, I work for myself. Like. That's, mm. it was fun, there's a lot of money, a very open type policy, very chill environment. Bah. For lunch, dudes go to the gun range, play pimp, I mean, it's just, it's fucking fun. I'm battling with this shit the whole day. I'm like, my two channels are gonna suffer, the other projects that I got are gonna suffer because I don't have the time to dedicate to that shit. And that was just in my head the whole time. So I spent the whole day there, kind of learning the vibe or whatever, and towards the end of the day, I, I it just weighed on me crazy. And I was looking at the GPS and I'm like, damn, it's gonna take me three and a half hours to get home with the traffic. Mm. So towards the end of the day, I asked Roman to have a sit down in his office, in the infamous office, and Adrian as well. Let me tell you, Adrian has this persona that comes off as a petty kind of hard ass. What a fucking, this guy's a stand up guy. I mean stand up guy, not saying anything else about anyone else, but he comes off sometimes as the standoffish, like hard ass closer fucking stand up dude. Sat down and I had a heart to heart, literally a good fucking conversation, maybe 40 minute, almost an hour conversation with both of them. So I'm forever grateful for that conversation. And you couldn't keep it realer in that shit. That conversation was one of the most deep, inspiring, eye-opening conversations that I've had in a long time. Especially from someone who was an employer, I've never had that. Both Adrian and Roman shared their stories, shared how much they make, how much I could potentially make, what they saw in me, all these factors, like, like a pitch, like why you could work here. You know what I'm saying? Not like begging me or nothing like that, but why I could work here. But they also made it clear that this is something that 
based on where I live, like I would have to, if I wanted to really kill it, I would definitely have to be a little bit closer or potentially move to PA and that's not an option for me. And one of the things that kind of just hit and hit right, Roman gave me his story and he's, he's mentioned this story on social media before of how he was working a nine to five gig, making over six figures, but wasn't happy and wanted to do his true passion. And he wanted to do what he wanted to do and build what is now Luxury Bazaar. And the sacrifices that he had made, having a newborn, a wife that was unemployed at the time, and all this grind shit and how he bet on himself. Even though he had that security blanket, that net of a six figure income guaranteed coming in, that he was willing to risk it all to do something that he absolutely loved. And clearly, it paid off. And for me, that was a conversation where, and I might be misinterpreting it, where he was trying to tell me like, yo, you work your ass off here and you're gonna get fiscally where you wanna be, but you gotta put in that grind and that sacrifice. But the way I read into that was, as an entrepreneur with a brand that's really just getting off the ground now, am I ready to go towards the safety net, which was probably Luxury Bazaar and making a lot of money, to sacrifice my dream to be a full-blown entrepreneur and run my businesses and build my brand up and do exactly what I love without a boss? And that's how I saw that shit. And I had to make one of the hardest decisions I've ever had to make in my life and turn down the opportunity on the gray market challenge. Another thing that made that decision so hard is that I got two dudes, my day ones, that love what I'm doing in this space, being an entrepreneur and building this brand and assist me quite often. And I wanna put them in a position where they can be more independent and build, help them build a brand as well. So they can hopefully pursue their own dreams. And that's important to me, always building up your team. Like it's not just about building yourself up, it's about building your team around you that's with you from day one. It's not about breaking somebody off with a check or whatever, no, no, no. When I eat, I want my team to eat. So I gotta help put y'all in a position where y'all can eat and be better than me. That's an accomplishment on yourself. It's not just you, all you, and nothing but you. When you can help your core, your team eat, and grow. And now you wanna do this? I'ma help you do that like you helped me. I'ma try to help put you in position so you can get to that place and maybe supersede me. I'm good with being a leader, but I'm also good at knowing my position. I can open the doors for my brothers and be like, yo, psh, I'm your chauffeur, my G. You handle, let's go. I'll follow you. That shit is important. And you don't get that nowadays. Let me tell you, that shit was hard. It was super difficult to make that decision. Cause Luxury Bazaar, I knew I would've killed it. I would have killed it. And the content creation, nobody there was gonna fuck with me. The network of people that I have and the support and the love that I got, nobody was gonna fuck with me. On camera, nobody was gonna fuck with me. On watch knowledge, yeah, y'all y'all could have locked, laced me out, for sure. But I would have grinded, I would have like this, studying, just to get my shit. And you don't gotta be the ultimate watch expert to flip a watch, trust me. Connections, network is key, that Rolodex is everything and associating and being a solid business person is what sets you apart and i got that in the bag on that three plus hour drive home my son was asleep before i got home i always put my son to sleep that's my shit. that's me and my son's time to put my child in bed so why it's extra important to me to have that with my kid to be able to say good night every night because my child needs repetition it's 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 in his dna my i have a special needs son. And this isn't a, oh, woe is me or whatever. I'm just keeping it real with y'all. So he needs a particular structure and he needs daddy to say goodnight every night. And I don't care what I'm doing. That's, that has to happen. There might be some days I'm traveling. There might be some days I'm doing this or that where I could FaceTime or whatever, but there has to be some consistency. There. That's my kid. Also, when you're a married man, you need to make time for your significant other. That's just what it is. You got to. And to keep it real, like if I don't give myself the opportunity to truly build my brand to the highest level I can possibly do it, and be a true entrepreneur with no one else to answer to, I never gave myself a shot. I would have been doing the complete opposite of what Roman said. So after dragging you guys through this whole story, essentially what I'm telling you guys is that I gave up a potential dream opportunity, an amazing work environment, six figure plus income to pursue my dream and build my brand into the highest possible level I can, to keep my independence and to be able to push myself even harder because I just missed that safety net. And that shit was hard, bro. Luxury Bazaar, I thank you guys. Thank you, Roman. Thank you, Adrian. And thank you, Avi, that I had the most conversation with. And to me, the level of respect that I gained for them 
just went up here. Forget the content creation part as human beings and businessmen. Those individuals in the gray market challenge better do their best to stay in that environment and break their backs because you will never find another work environment like that. I guarantee you. It's an all-in-one factory under one roof. And anybody who works there is fortunate and lucky enough to have that opportunity. But for you guys who are in those crossroads of making these hard decisions in life, sometimes you gotta step back and remove that safety net and really look towards what you want. We have one life to live. Time is the most valuable commodity in life, not money. You have never, ever, been to a funeral where a Brinks truck was following the hurts. You can't take that shit with you. Time is the most valuable. So you have one life to live in this earth. You don't gotta be petty. You don't gotta be backstabbing. You don't gotta be mixy and talking about other people and be on everybody else's bullshit. Build your brand. Build your legacy. Leave your mark. Take risks. Calculate those risks. And the opportunity of a beautiful thing can come. And if it doesn't come, nobody can fault you for not giving it your absolute all. So I was going to be a luxury bazaar employee and I gave up a potential dream job to be a full blown entrepreneur and build my brand. What would you guys have done? I love y'all motherfuckers from the heart. If you stay towards the end, I appreciate y'all and I'll see y'all bitches next time. Let me know of great opportunities or anything that you have done to make sacrifices in your life for the betterment or what you thought was the betterment of your future. I'll see y'all bitches next time. You know it is biggest in the game. Smooches. Fly gun holder, money folder, Mona roller, star tag. When it's time to call back uh, for the rough, rugged, and raw way, this nigga Jay, it's a game, but he don't play. Hey, for all the chicks that got dead in the penthouse suite on top of my mom's crib, hey. it's long since you never get in. It's long since that you would think that. You